Yo, as always, like, share, subscribe. Now let's just get into it. So I wanted to do a video about the polls and y'all dropped questions. So I'm going to get into it. First, I want to address James Yoder because he wanted to, he, this dude got offended because, because I said something about people not taking that post that he did with the food serious. So he wanted to get mad and come write a comment that he heard I was taking shots at him and, you know, he's got way more followers than me. And if, I, if, if, if people don't take him seriously, then what about me then says, well, if you got so many followers, why are you coming on my page even addressing anything I said? Now, I could have took the high road and just let it go, but why? I actually own my page. I don't work for Chat Sports. So if Chat Sports decides to get rid of James Yoder, then where will you be? You probably won't even make no Michigan videos anymore. You'll move on to whoever else you can cover. So don't come for me, bro. Because I'm, I'm not on here begging for views, begging for people to share like you. Begging. I be seeing you in your comments trying to post stuff, post extra comments so it gets in the algorithm. Because if you don't put up those numbers and get people to subscribe and get on your push chat sports, there will be no Michigan report with James Yoder. It'll be Michigan report with whoever else won't be you. So don't try to come for me, bro. This is my page. So I'll, I'll, I will address you and cook you. You didn't want to say some, you just made an enemy. That's fine. I don't remember us ever being friends. So if you want to address it, we, we, can, we can address it because I can be real petty. If people took you serious, if people took you serious, then that Michigan, that, that hot dog pick wouldn't have been, wouldn't have went viral. They would have went by what you posted. But you troll half the time. Some people knew you not to take you serious. This ain't no shot. It's just the truth. Now back to business. So Michigan just, the, eight, the coaches poll just came out. And Michigan's number two. So the thing about that is now it's real. Now those expectations, all that stuff. Michigan didn't get any first place votes. Uh, Georgia got 61. Bama got four first place votes, and Ohio State got one. But Michigan's number two in the rankings. Now with, the, it, I'll just read the top the top ten. You got Georgia, Michigan, Bama, OSU, LSU, USC, Penn State, Florida State, Clemson, Tennessee. So, you know, it is what it is. The expectations, they're there. It's real now. We all knew we were going to be top five or top three, you know, so this ain't changed nothing. The expectations, the coaches, the coaches know what's on, what Michigan has coming back. Got JJ, got Donovan, got Blake, got probably a great offensive line and got most of your starters back on defense. So nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. But, you know, we're just getting closer to the season, so now it's real. All right. Now let's get into these questions. I hate that I had to get on Yoder, but I had to because he he want to take shots at Sam Webb and take shots at people. I'll, I'll address you. I don't work for nobody on this with this YouTube. It's my channel, so I'm, I'm going to address you. You want to come in and I'm taking shots. All right, first comment from Darshanin. I'm not sure what is it, what your name is, bro. Darshanin5829. How do you feel about our defensive defensive line? Also, with adding Oregon and Washington, do you feel that they will keep Michigan versus OSU every year? Is our wide receiver going to develop enough to help the run game? The defensive line, I feel good about. The only question with the defensive line is, the only question with the defensive line is, 
pass rush. The edge rushers. Can they consi- can we consistently get a pass rush? Last year, the better the teams we played, we couldn't really get a pass rush. We had to blitz, which in turn makes your secondary it, it puts them it puts it in question. That's why you saw like the TCU. TCU, we had to blitz. Max Duggan backing up, giving giving more time. And then, you know, Quentin getting those little drags and stuff and taking them to the house like back when Don Brown was around. So that's the only question. Will we be able to get a consistent pass rush? The D tackles, no, no, no doubt about them being good. It's just the the defensive ends and the edge rushers. Derek Moore, Derek Moore, uh, Josiah Stewart. I got faith in those guys, but they still got to prove it. Uh, Braden McGregor, uh, Harold. Jalen Harrell. Uh, let's see. So those two guys got to prove it. And you said adding Oregon and Washington, do you feel that they will keep Michigan versus – you got to keep Michigan versus Ohio State. Now, if they want to move it, then that's the thing. But you have to keep it. And if they move it, the only thing – if they were to move the game, I think they should move it to the first game of the year. First game of the year, gone in – Get it popping, go on and knock it out the first game of the year. Don't wait to the middle. Nope. Make it the first game. Get it, get it done. And you said, is our wide receiver going to develop enough to help run game? That's a big question. Darius Clemens, Moore, Morris, Peyton O'Leary, are they going to step up? Those are the guys that are going to really have to step up and show, you know, show what they can do. Somebody's going to have to make that jump. If we if we have championship expectations and we do, one of those re- young receivers is going to have to take that that next jump and really become a threat. And just in case injuries happen cuz Roman Wilson usually gets hurt. Knock on wood, he doesn't, but he usually gets hurt. Cornelius is pretty healthy, knock on wood. He's been healthy pretty much since he's been at Michigan. But Roman usually gets dinged up. So you got to make sure somebody's ready to take that other spot because we've got tight ends, but you don't want to consistently run your – tight ends can move the chains, but they don't give you those big chunk plays. You know what I'm saying? So we need to see who's going to be that other deep threat. Who can take a a short route – to the house, make somebody miss. It's all, it's all hearsay. We got to see who actually can do that. So, are they going to develop? I don't got the answer right now. We're gonna have to wait and see. They can talk up everybody in practice, but practice ain't the game. All right. SB SDB twelve eighteen. Appreciate the comment. He says. Uh, he said, me and Yoder at it. Uh, this number two ranking is legit. I firmly believe Michigan will be number one by October. UGA will slip up in a game or barely squeak by in one game, and Michigan will top the polls. This has to be the year. I wouldn't be surprised by that if maybe uh, Georgia had a tight game. Their schedule isn't tough, honestly. But I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia had a tight game and maybe Michigan's just rolling over everybody and jumps them, maybe. It's a possibility, or even maybe at Penn State, we if, if Michigan blows out Penn State or something, we probably jump them. That's if if Penn State is un, still undefeated, if they've beaten Ohio State, or maybe if they played Ohio State tight and that's their only loss. You know what I'm saying? But if we blow them out, we could probably jump them. You know, but it's it's definitely a possibility, and this 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 is the year right now because 2024. 2024, if J.J., uh, we're going to lose a lot. So if there was a year that if J.J. comes back where it's his team, it would be next year where he's going to really have to put on put the team on his back because that's what court, great quarterbacks do. Let's see. Appreciate the comment. 23 Tails says, looks like the pass rush from the spring game is better. What's your opinion? May help the DBs, especially if we play zone on the tail end. Yeah, in the the spring game, the spring game, it looked like 
Josiah Stewart. It looked like uh, Derek Moore. I know. I know Derek Moore lost weight. He wants to wanted to be quicker, and that that could be a good thing. You know, you lose some weight, makes you more explosive, makes you able to bend a little a little bit more, bend a little bit more on the pass rush. So he and he definitely looked good in the spring game. Jalen Harrell, he's got all the tools to be to get us five to eight sacks. I want to say ten. Let's go with it. Five to ten sacks. It's just on him to put the work in right now and over the past few months to want to get 10 sacks. To I'm I'm not going to try to get 10 sacks or I'm not going to try to get 7 sacks. I'm going to get 7. I'm going to get 7 sacks. No one is going to stop me. If you're in my way, I feel bad for you. You're getting rolled over. You're getting that spin move. You're getting that bull rush. Rush. I'm coming for you, QB, whoever. I'm coming for you. So they got to prove it, though. Because, you, you know, the spring game, it was a mix and match. You, you had some starting offensive linemen. You had some, you know, it wasn't just the, the number ones versus the number ones. So we still got to wait and see. But. They definitely look like they're ready to have breakout years, all of those dudes, as far as sacks. And definitely the pass rush, if we get a consistent where we a consistent pass rush where we don't have to blitz, that is that that lets your secondary do a lot more things, whether it's zone, whether it's coverage. So because you don't have to blitz, now you can leave two safeties. You can leave two safeties high, you know what I'm saying, or you can run these different zone coverage coverages because the the quarterback doesn't have time to really read the defense. He's looking over his shoulder, knowing that pass rush is coming. He's getting happy feet. So that's that's if the pass rush is, has made that step, then it does definitely helps the secondary in the back end. Let's see, P Maximus. I'm wondering about our punt returner. Who do you feel comfortable with? I hear they're giving Samaj Morgan some reps, but I get nervous playing a freshman back there unless his name is Steve Breston. Yeah, hey, shout out to Steve Breston. Dude was a uh, he. He ran funny to me, but he was. I think he was a long strider. That's probably why it looked funny. But he was. He was a a hell of a slot receiver and uh, and a punt returner. He definitely take it to the house, you know what I'm saying, and make guys miss and get on down. But uh, honestly, if if we had if we had depth at receiver, I wouldn't mind seeing Roman back there. But I don't think we can risk it because we don't have the depth at receiver. Um, honestly, as far as somebody I don't know. As far as somebody that we know, I, I don't really know who, because this would this would be my plan maybe. In big games, I might put Roman Wilson back there, or even Donovan Edwards back there. I'm not sure if Donovan does that, but you know what I'm saying. I I wouldn't mind putting one of those stars back there at punt return in big games. You know what I'm saying. But as far as somebody else. I heard Cole Cabana was trying to get that spot, was trying to get punt return. I don't know if they trust him to do it, but uh, I don't really know much about Samaj Morgan, so I ain't going to sit up here and lie like I do. But they're going to they gonna, they gonna have to figure it out. You know, I don't like to talk about something I don't know about. But uh, as far as big games, I'd like to see star, a star back there, honestly, unless whoever they got back there is doing his thing, then let him, let him eat. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't mind seeing Cole Cabana back there if he's if he's got that speed and the elusiveness to be a difference maker. Because punt return, kick return, those those dudes are big. That's special teams is a big advantage if you got somebody that back there that can you know get you good field position. AJ Henning would you know be back there messing with the ball, but he'd get us in good field position and the blocks turn out right. He'd take it to the house. So. You know, we definitely need a difference maker back there. But as far as who I who I think, I don't know. I, I'm a, I, me. I put a star back there, but we can't risk Roman, honestly. 
Uh, let's see. Corey Banks says Donovan Edwards would be a matchup nightmare for defenders in the passing game, especially linebackers. Do you think we should use him in the slot on passing downs? Also, if we decide to open up the passing game more, who do you think could be our go-to deep threat receiver? Uh, they're going to use Donovan in the slot. That's just that's part of his game. You know, they they used him last year, but you know he was fighting injuries most of last year. He had he messed up his knee, which we didn't even know about, and then he also had his the hand. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's definitely what they they're gonna use Donovan in the slot and in pass in the pass game because he's just good at it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's unnatural for him. He's a good pass catcher, so you'll definitely see him used in the passing game. Uh, hold on, I didn't click the wrong thing. In the deep receiver, in the deep receiver is Roman. Now, I'd like to see maybe Darius Clemens used in deep routes because he's big if he's got that speed, which I think he does. I'd like to see Darius Clemens used on deep, on not just deep bombs, but throw it up. 6'3", throw that thing up to him. Let him go get it. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to see him used like that. But as far as just a deep threat, like he's going to run past you, that's Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson will, will get deep on anyone. I don't care. I've never seen a team. I've never seen us play a team where he couldn't get deep on the corner, whether that was Georgia, whether that was Ohio State. He he's going he can he's going to get behind your corner. And you if your safety is late, it's a wrap. It's just does JJ see him and is the ball going to be catchable? But Roman's the deep threat, but I think we need another deep threat, somebody that can all right, just throw it up to him and go get it. You would think Cornelius would be that dude that could go up and get it because he's tall tall and lanky too, but they don't really use him like that. So I, I, I'm hoping Darius Clemens is able to go up and get it. You know what I'm saying? Like we talking that, that Moss throat, put it, put your hand up. I got him beat. Even if I don't throw it up, I'm going to get it. I'm too big. And Darius Clemens is built like a tank. He's built like T.O. Or, or David Boston or something. So throw that thing up to him. But we have to see, can he get deep? Can he go up and get that thing? He's got the tools to be able to. But as far as a pure, just he's going to run past you, it's Roman Wilson. No doubt in my mind. I mean, that's just what it is. Uh, now let's see. User ZN something says, appreciate the comment. He says, can you see our offense put up 50 plus points on our rivals, especially the talent we have on offense? The passing game should be in full effect with the big games as well. Uh, Yeah. I mean, 50 is a lot. And I just say that because the way Michigan plays with the more, you know, more balance this year you know, last year, we're going to run that rock. So it's hard to get 50 because you're going to eat up the clock a lot because you're running it so much. So 50 is a possibility depending on depending on how balanced we are or if we're, the pass game is working. OK, we're going to we're going to we're going to throw that rock around because y'all can't stop it. So we're going to throw it around. You know what I'm saying? 50 on Ohio State or Penn State, that's 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 quite a bit, honestly. You know what I'm saying? That's the with the way we play, we that's almost shutting their offenses down completely and getting a punt return or a pick six also. So I wouldn't say 50, but I could see definitely high 40s. You know what I'm saying? We should have had 50 on Ohio State with that return uh with the with the scoop and score at the end, but they blew the whistle. But that was definitely a fumble. But uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to get fifty against a good team. You almost need a, a either a lot of turnovers for them to turn it over a lot, or like a pick six or a or a uh, punt return or some special team score. But I can see us getting high forties on either one of them. You know, if the game is going right. Now this is a huge comment, but let's 
Let's let's go through it. Uh, Bruce McGraw done hit me with a long. He done put a bunch of questions in here. So let's 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 go. After this season, with the expansion of the Big Ten, we'll have a tough slate for the twenty four season. What do you think our pro- projected record will be? Also, let's go by the assumption that we win the Natty. If we beat OSU next year in the shoe with fifteen plus going into the draft, going at worst eleven and one, should that put us up there with an as an elite program? Uh, let me see. The first one, our slate for 2024 is, is tough and we're losing a bunch of dudes. So the record to me, that depends on who, who, who stays, you know what I'm saying? If JJ stays, if J it, JJ alone, if he stays, that could be, uh, wins in, in big time games because he should be able to shred teams for real next year. If he stays. You know what I'm saying? So I have to see who stays and who goes for me to give a, a real prediction of of what our record would be next year. And if we were to beat beat them, win the Natty and, and beat Ohio State, I wouldn't say – I'd say that if we win the Natty, I would say that brings us to the uh, the elite for now kind of stage. It's, it's hard to say because Michigan has – you had two years of going to the playoff. If you win the Natty, but then you take a step back, it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like Clemson kind of had consistent winning where they were going to the playoff pretty much every year. And I say Clemson because they were kind of the new kids on the block, so to, so to speak. So they had kind of consistent kind of winning. Either they were in the playoff, playing in the championship, or winning championships. You know what I'm saying? So that brought them up to the elite I think if we won the title, we'd still – well, I say I was going to say we still have to make the playoff, but it's going to be easier to make the playoff. So with the way things are going, I think you might could say that would bring us to the elite because going to two, two playoffs in a row, winning a natty, and now the playoff is expa- expanded where it's going to be way easier to make it and we'll probably make it most of the time. So I think that would kind of bring us into that elite because – you win a natty, them recruits gonna take recruits take notice of. Okay, you're winning. I want to be a part of that, and you already got a, a huge brand at Michigan, so I want to be a part of that. So I guess it would kind of bring us to, into that upper echelon for real. Where and then you guys can't say, oh, your last title was '97. It, it was a it was a half it was a half championship. Your before that it was 1948 or whenever that was. You know what I'm saying? And it, our last title wasn't 2014, it was 2023. So, yeah, I think that would kind of get us up there. You know, it's it's still a debate. It, it would still be a debate, and it's all opinion-based, but I think it would kind of cement that. Uh, your next question was, who would you prefer to lose, mentor or more, and who would you replace either one with? Ooh. If I was to lose somebody, I would probably say more because you can still play hardball ball. You've still got hardball. So you can play hardball ball and win a lot of games. All you need is for him to hire somebody with the passing game. You know what I'm saying? You just need to hire somebody to develop the passing game more. If I was to try to get somebody, I'd try to get Joe Brady. You see what he did with where he with, with with LSU and Joe Burrow, but mentor I don't I wouldn't want to lose mentor I don't know how many of these Raven coaching tree guys are left now you know what I'm saying I don't want to lose mentor especially after what he showed last year with the you get nothing second halves you know what I'm saying I don't want to lose that because this dude's coaching adjustments are ridiculous now. We needed the biggest one against TCU, but I ain't going all those games where he came out, had the defense come out and lights out in the second half. I don't want to lose that. And who knows how much better this dude might get. And I know people are taking notice and he might not be here for that for, for much longer, but I don't, I'd, I'd, I'd lose more before I want to lose, uh, lose mentor because you know, hardball, hardball ball can get you a long way. You just need him to, all right, get you somebody to work on that passing game so we can at least be balanced and have something going on. You know, hardball, run it every time. 
I'm getting three yards. That's cool. <laughs> I'm getting three yards. I, I'm cool. We can go for it on fourth. We're going to get one yard. <laughs> All right. And you said, would you go to the NFL to look for a replacement or stick with the college coach? As far as defense, I would go, if Mentor was to leave, I would go with a, a, try to get an NFL coordinator. With more, uh, I'm not sure. I, I'd go with, I'd try to get Joe Brady for sure. Wherever he is, I try to get him. But uh, um, I would, I wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me whether it was NFL or college. I just need to. I would just have to know that he's got his resume is legit. He's came and changed offenses and had the passing game where it needs to be. That's all I'm worried about with with that. Third question, you say, okay, with the 10 conference games instead of nine, given the expansions, I mean, it is what it is. Ain't no point in us being mad about it. We can't stop it. This 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 expansion train and going towards a, a, a SEC, Big Ten, basically being all the conf- – all the – where all the good teams are – the 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 legit power five teams it's coming and we ain't gonna be able to stop it so ain't no point of complaining about it of course i i don't want to play another conference game but that's does it matter you know what i'm saying it, it ain't gonna matter so we might as well just get ready and just hope that we got the best team to you just gonna have to beat it you just gonna have to win games that's all it is to it ain't no point of complaining about it because we, we, we ain't we ain't going to be able to stop what's happening because I talked about this, what was that, last year or two years ago, what was about to happen. It's going to be like the NFL, AFC, NFC. That's what it's going to be, with, except SEC, Big Ten. And it's going that's where all the teams are going to be at. So ain't no point of complaining or, you know, this is just where it's going. It's all about money and, you know, having the most teams and the most different uh, TV markets. All right, next question. Assuming you like odd numbers, what two additional teams would you like to join the Big Ten, Florida State and Clemson or Stanford, Oregon State? Me as a a fan of football would be Florida State and Clemson to see Clemson and Michigan, to see Florida State, Ohio State, you know what I'm saying, to see Clemson, Penn State, you know what I'm saying, to see these different matchups, Florida State, Michigan, Again, you know what I'm saying? They got away the last time. But uh, as a fan of college football, that's I'd want Florida State and Clemson. As a fan of Michigan and wanting to run the conference, I'd want Stanford and Oregon State because, you know, they're not – Florida State could – they might be good this year. You know what I'm saying? They're getting hyped like they're going to be good. Clemson, they could be good any year. You know what I'm saying? So that's another team with roots in the South that can have teams, national championship caliber teams. So, and the same with Florida State. They get their stuff together. They're in the South. They're going to recruit and have them dudes. You know what I'm saying? So as a fan of Michigan, I'd want Stanford and Oregon State because they're beatable any year. You know what I'm saying? Clemson and Florida State, they might have a team with them dudes. You ain't beating them this year. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't beating them that, that year. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I feel about it. Last question from, from Bruce McGraw. If we don't go undefeated, who would you rather lose to? Milk, <laughs> Milk Dud Head Tucker or James Franklin? Uh... As much as I hate to say this, as much as I hate to say this is it would have to be Michigan State. And the reason I say that Michigan State is because I don't think Michigan State's going to be that good. So I think Michigan State will probably have three or four losses. So when I, when I think about things, I think about, okay, can we still win the conference? If, if Penn State beats us and then they beat – and then they beat Ohio State somehow. Or or let's say this. Penn State beats us. 
we beat we're all undefeated except against each other so Penn State beats us Michigan beats Ohio State we, we both have one loss but Penn State is going to have the head to head they go to the championship you know what I'm saying or it's a or it goes to margin of victory. Let's say Ohio State beat Penn State. But if Penn State beats us, they, they might beat Ohio State too, honestly. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather lose to Michigan State because it's not likely they're going to they're gonna win the Big Ten East. You know what I'm saying? If Penn State beats us, they might win the Big Ten East. So I'd rather lose to Michigan State because – Ohio State, I know Ohio State going to put 60 up on them most likely because what Ohio State is doing to Michigan State the last few years, it's, that's, 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 just, that's just bad what they're doing to them. So that's how I feel about it because I don't think, I think Michigan State's going to lose three games, so we ain't going to have to worry about them in the Big Ten East. But Penn State, nah, we can, I don't, I don't want to lose to them because they might, they might try to take our conference. They might try to take the crown of king in the north. No, sir. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, that was your last question. User has another question. After two playoff games, especially the playoff game last year, do you see the defense more evolve like championship caliber defense? Uh... It's, to me, the defense, it's really on the pass rush this year. The pass rush, the pass rush and also uh, the linebackers. Like, let's say let's say we had Aiden and Ojabo. We would have beat TCU. I got no doubt about that. We just didn't have pass a pass rush, so we had to blitz, and it messed, it messed up the secondary's coverage against TCU. That was the problem. We couldn't get pressure without blitzing. And I know I know somebody's going to say, "Well, they ran it pretty well on y'all too." Yeah, they did. But them getting those pass plays when they weren't running it that well, it it gave them life because when they had to pass, we couldn't really stop it. They didn't try they didn't when they when they had to they didn't even pass it that well. That's why I'm stuttering because they didn't even pass it that well. But in those crucial situations when they had to pass, they executed. That's the thing. So when the first downs and stuff like that, they didn't really, they weren't executing great. It was those big time third downs when we, we had to have a stop to really change the momentum in the game where they executed and got big plays out of the passing game. Because we couldn't get a pass rush. We had to blitz in those situations. So that's the big thing. So has the defense got to that championship caliber? It's gonna it's gonna depend on the ends. It's gonna depend on the, the defensive line and the, the edge rushers. Can they get pressure without us blitzing? That's gonna that's one. Two, the linebackers have to take that step up in physicality. Now, Junior Colson, he they say he added 15 pounds of muscle or weight. Why? Because we need him to thump. We need him to be a thumper out there and instill that physical defense. That middle linebacker has to be coming with some pop. You know what I'm saying? Sideline to sideline, this dude, he, he's that dude. He had a hundred tackles. Like I'm not, I know people are gonna say you you said he was soft, he was a soft tackler, and he was. That's probably why he put on more weight. So he can lay some wood. But also, now we have Houseman, who's also sideline to sideline and is physical. So the physicality on that defense can take that notch up to be championship caliber. Because, and I'm just going to be honest, our defense, and TCU said this, that Michigan didn't really gang tackle, and we we weren't a physical, physically imposing defense. We just kind of did, they just kind of did their jobs and got off the field. But they weren't 
physically imposing, hidden dudes. You know what I'm saying? Playing with that reckless abandon where you seeing dudes get popped. So that's the thing about that. So hopefully Junior Colson with the weight and Hausman being there, sideline to sideline, physicality, and also Rod Moore gaining more weight. So he can lay some wood. And I'm hoping Jaden McBurrows is is gets some some playing time or maybe even starts at that other corner because they say he's a thumper. I got a short on my vid on my uh I got a YouTube short on my page of him as a freshman coming in and laying the wood on a I believe it was a Nebraska or a Wisconsin player and, and he gave him a stinger. His arm was dead. He had <laughs> his whole left side went numb. We need hitters. That physical that physical nature you know what I'm saying? That's the difference between like a Georgia. Georgia got them dudes. They be out there hitting. From playing Michigan, they were out there hitting everybody. Laying that wood. Ohio State, they out there hitting. You know what I'm saying? When Georgia played Ohio State, they out there laying them out. So that's the thing. On defense, we need a little more physicality in that reckless abandon. Like, we're going to hit you. If I knock out my teammate trying to knock you out, so be it. That's what I'm out here to do. That's just how you have to play on defense. Reckless. Smart reckless, though. I ain't talking about getting no penalties or nothing like that. Contr I would say controlled chaos. But those are the things. Physicality, pass rush. And uh, better, better linebacker play. Uh, let's see. Appreciate the comment. Marcus Barton says, given some of the recent recruiting misses at wide receiver, how secure is Bellamy at wide receiver coach? And what kind of season do wideouts need to have to justify his de development skills? He needs to come with it, honestly. Because I I've been looking at him sideways Last year, last year I was looking at him sideways like this dude might need to go because I'm not seeing the development really, honestly. Just honestly with 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 the route tree, you know what I'm saying, and just getting these dudes ready to go. I'm not I'm not seeing it really, and that he might need to go. He might be one of the few last few dudes that need to go. Cause we done tweaked this roster, we done tweaked this coaching staff, and we're getting the dividends. What's what's the position we don't seem to be getting big dividends? Wide receiver. We getting them at running back now with Mike Hart. You know what I'm saying? We getting them at, on the offensive line. We getting them everywhere else. It seems like except except receiver. We getting them at corner. We getting them at safety. D line. So, I think we just replaced linebacker, so hopefully we'll get dividends there. But receiver, we ain't getting, it don't seem like we're getting the dividends of Bellamy being the coach. So, I'm definitely watching him and watching to see if this, if this pass game is clicking and if these receivers, besides Roman and Cornelius, are out there showing up and showing out. Because last year, you know, we had... We were on the struggle bus for a lot of games. We were winning, but the past game was struggling. Some of those games, Harbaugh just said, forget it. Run left, run right. Run left, run left, run right. Run up the middle, run up the middle, run left, run up the middle, run right. <laughs> Doing my Madden. That's my Madden game. Uh, okay, you, you got a good pass defense? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run Harbaugh ball. I'm going to have you mad. I'm going to run that rock left and right up the middle all game. You ain't going to get nothing but two possessions. <laughs> so if the pass game ain't what it is, Harbaugh will go gladly go back to that. And and I got one thing I want to say about Harbaugh ball real quick. And this is just if, if something was to happen to J.J., knock on wood, I ain't trying to say that, but I'm just, you know, hypothetical. If something was to happen to J.J., and I think I said this before, I think I would just, I think I would honestly play Orgy, and I would run that rock 
Sorry, receivers. Sorry, receivers. Depth. But I'm about to run this rock down y'all throat. Power run game. QB power. QB read. I'm about to run this rock down your throat. All game. And I'm about to physically impose my offensive line, my running backs, and my 6'3", 235 quarterback down y'all throat. What you going to do? It's just something to think about. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because you're going to have to, you're going to have to commit eight, eight guys to that, to that type of scheme just to deal with whether Orgy's going to keep it or give it because he's going to be a load to deal with. I ain't got no doubt you can stack the box and he still will probably get three yards on you because he's built like that. That's just something I was thinking about when I was driving at work. Like, if something was to happen to JJ, I might just, I'm about to run this rock with all three of them. All game, run screens and play action pass it. But we about to run this rock down your throat. Just something I was thinking about. Hopefully, well, we don't want to see that now. Don't think I'm saying I want that. That's, that's, that's if we lose our starter. Uh, let's see. Marcus Barden, appreciate the comment. No, that's, let's go. Rob Mella says, Zinner and JJ both addressed the media today, stating the offense was very pass-focused. Is Jim going to live up to this? Will him not being there for the first four first uh, four games cause this offense to be pa- more pass heavy? It should, and I think Jim. I think Harbaugh sees the writing on the wall. Like I'm very close to maybe being able to get a championship before I lose a lot of my seniors and my COVID players. So I better get this pass game because it's obvious now that. What stopped us the last two years in the playoff was the pass game. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just like now we got to get that. I, we have to get this pass game going. I got a quarterback that can make every throw. I just need to polish, get him polished up and ready to go and ready to lead in these big time moments without making mistakes. And it was good to hear JJ talk about I left a lot of plays on the field and I need to use what God gave me and I need to use my legs because JJ left a lot of yards on the field trying to make throws when he could have got 10 yards, could have maybe got 30 yards, could have maybe got five yards, you know what I'm saying, to stay ahead of the chains. You know what I'm saying? You can try to make those big plays, but you got to be able to understand, okay, what's the down and distance? Can, Can I go pick up the first down? Instead of trying a low percentage throw that's incomplete, and now we got a punt. When you could have went and got the first down, but you were chasing the big play. You got to understand the down and the distance. You know, sometimes you can afford to take those shots, but sometimes it's just about moving those chains. Go get those. It's third and five. It's third and four. Instead of rolling out trying to make that big bomb down the field, go get my four yards, son. Go get my four yards. You got them. You just got to go get them. So I, it was nice to hear JJ talking about being more decisive. But as far as Harbaugh embracing it, as long as as long as JJ is showing progression, and it's not just a a, a game where the, the passing game is just not there, and it's happening game after game. Now, if it's happening like last year, he's gonna dial it back. But if he's showing progression, like, okay, J.J.'s got it and we're seeing it, then he's going to let him flourish. That's how Harbaugh gets down. If he sees, you, okay, I can trust him to make good deci- good decisions and the, the, the pass game is, th- is starting to click and we all can see it in game, he's going to let him throw that rock. I've seen him do it with Jake Rudock. I've seen him do it with Shea Patterson. When, he, when Harbaugh trusts you as, as a quarterback to make the right decision, make the right plays, he'll let you throw it, but he has to trust you. So as long as J.J. is showing in game that he can trust him, he'll let him throw that thing. But J.J.'s got to prove it in game. 
making the right decisions, not making bonehead mistakes, and, you know, just having command of the team. And you say him not being there, will they tr – I mean, there's no better time to try to get the passing game going, going against these cupcakes. Because if, if worse comes to worse and you can't get it clicking, you can always run that rock. All right, Daniel Chavera, he's got a you got a long question now, bro. He said, with MSU being night game and with road games at Nebraska at Minnesota, do you worry sometime those could be games we stumble before our games that versus Penn, Penn State in Ohio in Ohio State? And you brought up 2013. We thought we were going to have a great year since we have a good class in Devin Gardner as QB. It looked promising after the Notre Dame game, but started falling apart. When we were barely we barely beat Akron and UConn along with losing games we weren't supposed to lose going seven and five in the regular season. Obviously different times since we know our twenty two team could easily ram through the twenty thirteen schedule. We just wanted to keep something in mind. Do you fear we could stumble in games like Nebraska, Minnesota, MSU, Maryland, including the tough two game two toughest games? Um, I mean, the way these this team is built and the mindset, and even hear J, hearing J.J. talk about it, which I was very thankful and glad to hear him say, we're taking this season, this game, this practice, one day at a time. I was so glad to hear him say that because that's the mindset they have, they have to have. Because you can't be – this is a year where all the hype is up. All the hype is up. You're number two in the country before you even play the game. So if you come out there feeling yourself like, oh, we're going to be in the championship. We're going we're gonna to blow through out Ohio State. Or, and you already you already thinking the trophy in your hand. You're going to lose one game, two games, three. It might be three. If your mindset is, oh, we, we're, we're, we're so loaded. We're just going to walk through everybody. You can't have that mindset. As, as a fan, we can think that way because we're not playing the games. But as a, a, a player, you can never have that mindset because you're going to go out there and you, somebody going to be ready to hit you in the mouth and they're going to beat you. you number two in the country. All right, we're going to show you. You ain't nothing. We, you ain't nothing. You we Underestimate us. We about to beat y'all today. So I was glad to hear JJ have that one day at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time, one week at a time because – that's the mindset of knowing that we can't take anyone for granted. And I think I think that TCU game humbled them because they were they were kind of cocky like we we are we we going to run through them. 335, we going to run through them. And I kind of had that feeling we were all feeling that way and we saw what happened. But I don't think I think this team team is just built a little bit different because they saw the bad game. They saw the bad years. And they understand if you take someone for granted, you you can get beat. So I don't I don't think that they, they're gonna take anyone lightly. But you know, Nebraska, Minnesota, you know, those teams are gonna come ready to play. I just think the as focused as this team is and as loaded as as, as loaded as they are, I don't think they're gonna have a hiccup, honestly. I mean, they could. If, if I see them losing a the game, it would be to Penn State or Ohio State. But I don't see one of these other teams beating them. Maybe Maryland. That Maryland game is, is a real trap game this year. So I don't see them losing until maybe the last three weeks when you got Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State. I just think they're too loaded. And, and the, players, the players on defense – third year in the same scheme I think they're going to be focused and they're going to really be clamping clamping teams down honestly I think on the, on the defense defensive side you get nothing you know what I'm saying and mentor also in his second year feeling himself knowing what he likes to do in certain situations and what defenses really work as far as offense I just think it's going to be it's going to be hard to deal with everything they're bringing to the table, especially if J.J. has taken that jump. 
Now that's a, we got to wait and see. But I just think this team is just loaded and focused on the ultimate goals because they're not, their goals aren't, oh, uh, we just running through it. They're taking it week by week. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the goals are Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State, Big Ten Championship playoff. But it ain't going to matter if you lose to Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to matter if you lose to Minnesota. It ain't going to matter if you lose to Maryland. So, you know, I think they're just focused on the goal. And especially hearing J.J. saying he's been watching a lot of his film and understanding the mistakes he made. That's our, that's our quarterback. So him taking that step, like I said, offensive line, they're loaded. They're going to do what they do. Blake, Donovan, they're going to do what they do. If J.J. takes that next step, so when that, when, that, when that run game is sputtering, we're not taking a step back like, oh, okay, defense, we, we got to have it. You get nothing for a few – for a few uh, possessions, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, till we can wear this team down and then Blake and Donovan take over, you know what I'm saying? We want to have it where, all right, the running game ain't working. JJ is understanding I can take this game over. I don't, and I don't even, I don't just have to take it over with my arm. Y'all too focused on my arm or too focused on Blake and Donovan. I can go get yards with my legs to keep to, to to sustain drives. Sometimes those those yards you get with your legs are backbreakers. So I just think this team. Long story short, which I I, I got long winded. I just think this team is too focused to lose one of these other games besides Penn State, Michigan. I mean Penn State and uh, Ohio State. I just think they're too focused. I could be wrong. Let's knock on wood and hope I'm not. <laughs> All right. Uh, Night, Night Owl says, what happened with you and Yoder? Yoder got offended with me saying no one takes him serious. Uh, as far as his post, I wasn't saying in general, but that's how he took it. And he got offended. Somebody, One of his fans uh, DM'd him and he said, hey, buddy, I heard you're taking shots at me. Yeah, I'm saying, well, now I am taking shots. So you best just keep promoting and trying to get, get all, get your subscribers and make sure you keep getting them so Chat Sports don't find somebody else to do the Michigan football report. Because then we'll see you somewhere else and they got you covering Ohio State. They got you covering uh, Oklahoma. They got you some, covering somebody else, Michigan State. You won't even be the – the Michigan football, it'd be Michigan State football report with James Yoder. What happened? I thought you were a Michigan guy. Oh, you were working for somebody else, which is fine. Don't try to act like you you just doing this out of the love for the game. Get out of here. That's why you got to beg. That's why you have to beg to, to, to get the following. So you can keep your chat sports page. <laughs> Don't make me be petty, bro. I'm petty. Last comment. TKE says, Yoder gets into it with everybody. Who does Michigan content? Straight hater. Yeah, so, I mean, that's it. He, he took offense to what I said and came in my comments talking crazy about some, he's got so many more subscribers and all this and that, and I just made an enemy. That's fine. We weren't. We were never friends, so I don't get what this enemy stuff is about. Like, I guess we're having a duel now. I don't get it, but okay. But you come for me, I'm. I'm gonna talk my trash. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm. I can be real petty, but since you wanted to, I don't see why you want to address somebody. If I'm so small potatoes, why are you addressing me? I wouldn't even address it. <laughs> so, it is what it is. My voice is about to is going out. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of questions, but we getting the season is closer. The season is closer, and we we getting down to brass tacks. And you know, all this talking will go into game game uh, post game reviews and all that, and post game analysis, talking about real football. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're trying to get to, and it's getting closer. 
So I appreciate the comments, hearing me rant and rave, but like, share, subscribe, and as always, go blue.